It's not morning. It's 5 p.m. Yeah, on Thursday. On Thursday, just like always, right? You could fool us. You like our new uh, church auditorium? I probably shouldn't say that. I'm totally joking. Um, no, but we decided to visit uh, uh, location. We wanted to follow after Mark. <laughs> well, and this is our hometown. We're we're Pasco guys. Yeah, that's right. And so I thought about bringing Vieiras. Oh, to, to keep it super I real. I do like Vieiras. Um, because it's just right across the street. I might. I couldn't figure out how to ride my bike here and hold a box of Vieiras. So <laughs> you're on your own, big boy. All right. But uh, I'm 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 gonna miss baseball. I don't think I don't think baseball's happening this summer. So I brought my Dust Devil hat, and uh, it's hard to go by here. I love coming here. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. But anyways, it's beautiful. Every time so far that we've tried to film outside, it has either been super windy or rainy. And so we're taking advantage we're of the nice We've been wanting to do today. this for a while. So finally, today's the day. So ignore the wind. Ignore the traffic. Not even there. Not even there. Not even there. We'll use our outside voices, too. How's that? <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Where are we at today? Uh, it is 1 Corinthians 7, chapter 7. You want to read it or you want me to? Go, go, go for it. Uh, I think you you enjoyed reading it. So I, oh, I we're, oh, we're okay. in our preview. There we You'll go. See. There we go. All right. So 1 okay. Corinthians 7, we're sticking with the message. Uh, if you like another version, that's fine. But um, your phone should give you options. So we're going to use the message. Paul continuing to write to the Corinthian church. And uh, Aaron has a point that he wants to make here um, after we get going. Now, getting to the question you asked in your letter to me. First, is it a good thing to have sexual relations? Certainly. Let's pray. <laughs> All done. Oh, wait a minute. No, there's there's more. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so Paul leaves no room for doubt. Certainly, listen, but only within a certain context. It's, a, it's good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and to provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality, the husband seeking to satisfy his wife, the wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. Abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time if you both agree to it. That just happened, and I think we're going to leave it. <laughs> uh, abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time if you both agree to it, and if it's for the purposes of prayer and fasting, but only for such times. Then come back together again. Satan has an ingenious way of tempting us when we least expect it. I am not, understand, commanding these periods of abstinence, only providing my best counsel if you should choose them. Sometimes I wish everyone were single like me, a simpler life in many ways but celibacy is not for everyone any more than marriage is god gives the gift of a single life to some the gift of a married life to others i do though tell the unmarried and widows that singleness might be the best thing for them as it has been for me but if they can't manage their desires and emotions they should all they should by all means go ahead and get married the difficulties of marriage are preferable by far to a sexually tortured life as a single and if you're married, stay married. This is the master's command, not mine. Mm -hmm. If a wife should leave her husband, she must either remain single or else come back and make things right with him. And a husband has no right to get rid of his wife. For the rest of you who are in mixed marriages, Christian married to non-Christian, we have no explicit command from the master. So this is what you must do. If you are a man with a wife who's not a believer, but who still wants to live with you, uh, but she still wants to live with you, hold on to her. If you're a woman with a husband who's not a believer, but he wants to live with you, hold on to him. The unbelieving husband shares to an extent in the holiness of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is likewise touched by the holiness of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be left out. As it is, they are also included in the spiritual purposes of God. On the other hand, if the unbelieving spouse walks out, you've got to let him or her go. You don't have to hold on desperately. God has called us to make the best of it as peacefully as we can. You never know, wife, the way you handle this might bring your husband not only back to you, but to God. You never know, husband, the way you handle this might bring your wife not only back to you, but to God. 
and don't be wishing you were someplace else with someone else. Where you are right now is God's place for you. Live and obey and love and believe right there. Uh, God, not only your marital status, defines your life. Ooh, that's a good one. Don't think I'm being harder on you than the others. I give the same counsel in all the churches. Mm. Were you Jew Jewish at the time God called you? Don't try and remove the evidence. Were you non-Jewish at the time of your call? Don't become a Jew. Being Jewish isn't the point. The really important thing is obeying God's call, following his commands. Stay where you were when God called your name. Were you a slave? Slave is no road, slavery is no roadblock to obeying and believing. I don't mean you're stuck and can't leave. If you have a chance at freedom, go ahead and take it. I'm simply trying to point out that under your new master, you're going to experience a marvelous freedom you would never have dreamed of. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you were free when Christ called you, you'll experience a delightful enslavement to God you would never have dreamed of. All of you, slave and free both, were once held hostage in a sinful society. And then a huge sum was paid out for your ransom. So please don't, out of old habits, slip back into being or doing what everyone else tells you. Friends, stay where you were, uh, stay where you were called to be. God is there. Hold the high ground with him at your side. The master did not give explicit directions regarding virgins, but as much as uh, but as one much experienced in the mercy of the master and loyal to him all the way, you can trust my counsel. Because of the current pressures on us from all sides, I think it would probably be best to stay just as you are. Are you married? Stay married. Are you unmarried? Don't get married. But there's certainly no sin in getting married. Whether you're a virgin or not, all I'm saying is that when you marry, you take on additional stress in an already stressful time, and I want to spare you if possible. I do want to point out, friends, that time is of the essence. There's no time to waste, so don't complicate your lives unnecessarily. Mm. Keep it simple. In marriage, grief, joy, whatever, even in ordinary things, your daily routines of shopping and so on, deal as sparingly as possible mm. with the things of the world, uh, that the things the world thrusts on you. This world, as you see it, is on its way out. I want you to live as free of complications as possible. When you're unmarried, you're free to concentrate on simply pleasing the master. Marriage involves you in all the nuts and bolts of domestic life and in wanting to please your spouse, leading to so many more demands on your attention. The time and energy that married people spend on caring for and nurturing each other, the unmarried can spend in becoming whole and holy instruments of God. I'm trying to be as helpful and make it easy as possible for all of you, not make things harder. All I want for you to be able to develop a way of life in which you can spend plenty of time together with the master without a lot of distractions. If a man has a woman friend to whom he is loyal but never intended to marry, having decided to serve God as a single and then changes his mind deciding he should marry her, he should go ahead and marry. It's no sin. It's not even a step down from celibacy, as some say. On the other hand, if a, mar if a man is comfortable in the decision for a single life, in service to God, and it's entirely his own conviction and not imposed on him by others, he ought to stick with it. Marriage is spiritually and morally right and not inferior to singleness in any way. Although, as I indicated earlier, because of the times we live in, I do have pastoral reasons for encouraging singleness. A wife must stay with her husband as long as she lives. If he dies, she's free to marry anyone else she chooses. She will, of course, want to marry a believer and have the blessing of the master. By now, you know that I think she'll be better off staying single. The master, in my opinion, thinks so too. Phew! Mm -hmm. That was a lot, Jason. He covers a lot of ground there. <laughs> okay, so why? Uh, yeah, yeah, right? Well, it, first of all, it was a little tiny thing that I had missed, and I know I've been told before, but I had forgotten. It was actually, he was answering a question that the first Corinthian, the Corinthian church sent to him. Mm -hmm. So uh, they asked this question. So uh, it, it tells you that it must have been a big, a big enough deal in their Christian community or in their community uh, to ask it. So uh, I thought that was, I thought that was really a, an interesting nugget. Um, man, there is, there's, it's, it, it, it like I was telling Jason before, and I, <laughs> Paul being single, it's almost like he was biased to the single lifestyle, which is, which is, which is great. And, uh, uh, yeah, so I, 
I was kind of blown away there. <laughs> Do you think in our society there's a pressure to marry? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's television shows about it. Uh, what it was a dress, my dress, whatever. <laughs> they're, they're oh, say yes for, to the dress. Yeah, say yeah. yes to the dress. That's it. But yes, you very. Pull my man card because I know what that show is. <laughs> I'm the one with the uh, all the daughters. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There is. It's always. I remember. I was thinking back when I was single and just. Oh, all my friends are married. Oh, to be married. Oh, how wonderful and you know all that stuff. So it is. You just get. You you get caught up in it. Yeah. Should we be promoting that in the church? Ooh, wow! You know, I think I think it, it's definitely it's definitely counsel, right? It's 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 like, look, if you're if you are as as Paul says, if you are sexually driven and you don't think you can you can last as a single, mm -hmm. and you really need that uh, partner, then yes, encourage marriage. But if if you can, uh, if you can abstain from that lust, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, and and be okay and and serve God as a single, go for it. Because because I just thought it was powerful. Because it does take a ton of commitment, a ton of time, you know, a, a ton of your energy uh, to keep to keep a uh, a marriage going well and strong. What I love about Paul, and again, it, it covers so much ground here but he tries to rise above and not get lost in the weeds mm -hmm. to separate out to say, look, God's silent on this, here's my advice. But to rise above, married, unmarried, whatever, your primary relationship yes. in this yeah. life is with God. Yep. End of the day. Mm -hmm. And I gotta talk to the same, how old were you when you got married? I was 28, we were both a little bit older, yeah, right? I was, and I was 30. Yeah. So there was a period of time there where everybody else, if they were going to partner up, had done so. Mm -hmm. And we weren't there. I, I worry that we're not affirming single people as single mm -hmm. people. Making you feel like a charity case. Like, oh, poor you. Not poor you. Right. There are plenty of days. Go get it. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. Now, Paul also says, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. If you pick that, you picked it. Stay in your lane. Don't mm -hmm. sit there wishing, you mm -hmm. know, the grass is always greener on the other side. That's right. that's hogwash. Because that's probably what got you into marriage in the first place. Yeah. Thinking, oh, well, marriage is going to fix everything. Marriage right. doesn't fix everything. Right. It complicates everything. Yeah. Even if you married well, right? Which yeah. you did. So, yes. um, I, I just, I wonder about that. Mm. And I want to be very explicit, just like Paul is, to say, if you are single right now, it's not a bad idea to stay that way. It is not because, right. because that's the thing, not just, Hey, let's make it because of what you can do in your relationship with God yeah. that gets harder when you are married. If you think marriage, just like having kids, oh, okay, it just complicates things. And it's not that it's not good stuff. It's good complications, but it is complicated. complicated. Yeah. It is complicated. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know, you know, would that have talked me out of getting married? No, I, I knew all this. Bible stuff too. So Paul's not trying to make anybody feel bad, but if they're asking the question, it's like, well, this is what I would do. I was I, just an example. I was just, just dawned on me is uh, if anybody is familiar with Katie Davis, the, the missionary as a single woman, she went into, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to mess up the country and where I, uh, and, and she got an orphanage going and started and people and wrote a book and, and got sponsors and then finally did find a, a a man came and they got married and now they have multiple children they have adopted and it's just an amazing story of what a single person um, can accomplish with all of that all of that time to to give to God I yeah I would just like our generation particularly in church life to quit extending sympathy to single people mm. like they're not complete yeah, they're totally complete. <laughs> yeah, that makes me sad on every single level, um, because there's a different me biblical. There's mm -hmm. a different message there. Yeah, uh, we have idolized sexual fulfillment to mm -hmm. the point where people are getting married that ought not get married. Right. Sorry, I just you know I'm a guy that does a lot of weddings and I have a pretty good batting average, but I've seen my share where it's like. Whew, 
Why? Yeah. Why? You know, that that option hasn't even been put out there as equal footing. Mm. Uh, the same thing with parenting, right? You yeah. and I, yeah. we haven't just been able to snap our fingers and get pregnant and have babies, right, right. you know? Uh, I think there's a different script out there. And, you know, this is where Paul's very helpful because these people obviously had some of the same questions. Now, maybe they were being ornery. I don't know. Maybe they were trying to get Paul to play. Sure in one hand, mm-hmm. But he just, he covers the whole <laughs> Yeah, he does really deal. well. Yeah. Here's another thing that comes up for me. Uh, Paul uses the word context, or you got to think about this stuff in the right relationships, staying in your lane. We talk over and over and over again about sexual relationship being saved for marriage. He's very plain, very explicit about all of that. Stay in your lane with that. Don't deprive each other, all this stuff. But the one little side thing, as he's talking about where we're supposed to stay in our lane, has to do with slavery. Mm. History shows that slave owners used those verses to subjugate people in this country to slavery. Misquote. Definitely. Misrepresented. Yep. Terrible blemish. Yep. On our country and the life of the church. And sorry, I, I hopefully am not going to stir the hornet's nest here, but we have to be so careful how we handle the words in the Bible because they have been used to do some very terrible yes. things to whole groups of people. So true. Not okay. Yep. Not okay. And I hate that it is taken, and it's, we're not even close to being done with it. Are you kidding? Read the news. But this idea that we can just use a scripture passage to prop up our ideas about who's right and who's wrong. Mm-hmm very careful with that we want to approach this stuff with humility but the words are plain too and if you don't like what's in there that's a conversation it's not well hey let me use this as a bludgeon to hammer down an entire group of people that's why i don't like the bible being used to make single people feel a certain way make people of a different color feel a certain way it's this was not just written to affluent white people right right not at all <laughs> right help us uh, <laughs> help us it's so oh my good. gosh how did yeah. we get so i know that's darn bible man <laughs> had to quit reading this stuff we'd be all happier and we'd just go on, a, go on a blissful ignorant <laughs> way right i'm not so sure that oh the my case. goodness my goodness uh, good stuff i think we're i think we just passed the 18 minute mark <laughs> yeah. Well, you God laid something on your heart, and I love it, and it was it was so good. So I appreciate. Well, it doesn't it. always fit into a nice three point package right. either. So, but it's there, and you know, worth exploring. We're open to conversations about all this stuff. We love praying for you guys and finding out what's going on. Yeah. Um, I want you. Yeah. Maybe wrap us up here. Yeah, yeah. No, we just we want to just continue to encourage you guys. It, it, it's it's a long haul that we've got going here that we just. When are we going to get out of phase one? What is next? What's Inslee with the church? All this stuff. And just stay, just continue to, the number one thing, like Jason said earlier, is, is just stay strong in the Lord. Stay focused on God. And and uh, all the garbage that we continue to see that we fill our minds with, uh, it just, it's just, it's not eternal. Uh, so let me, before I get on my soapbox, let me pray you guys <laughs> out. Uh, Father, I just thank you for Jason. Thank you for this time. Uh, I just, I just continue to pray for everybody that's watching for our, uh, our city, our state, and just guide us and direct us, Lord. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to share with everyone here. Uh, guide us and direct us in your precious name. Amen. Thanks guys. Have a good one. We'll see you next week. Pasco pride.